All right, welcome to today's program, and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about President Trump removes the United States from the Open Skies Treaty. Narrated by me, Preston Olson, Israel Prime Minister Netanyahu meeting with the Saudi Crown Prince, and also in this video you will see a developing story ticker on the bottom of your screen. What is the Open Skies Treaty? Well, it was an idea uh, invented by the Soviets in 1955, first floated by Soviet Premier Nikolai Bolganin to U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who basically scoffed at it. In 1989, uh, this was brought out of the uh, relics, and former President George H.W. Bush, also former CIA director, uh, signed this as uh, oh, as an initiative uh, in 1992. On March 24th, the Open Skies Treaty was made internationally binding by former NATO members and Warsaw Pact members, allowing state parties to officially apply for membership. And in 2020, on November 22nd, President Trump removed the United States from the Open Skies Treaty. The Wall Street Journal initially caught my eye with their report. And in their piece, they suggest that the Trump administration shut the door on the Open Skies Treaty. The author of this piece in the Wall Street Journal, Michael R. Gordon, suggests that this accord was meant to reduce the risk of war by carrying out reconnaissance missions over each other's territories. To me, that sounds like the opposite of preventing war and more of an opportunist errand for interventionism. Uh, with respect to the author here. Scathing reports uh, begin rolling in from Bloomberg and Moscow state-run news. These reports indicate Russia's uh, particular distaste for the treaty now that the United States has withdrawn. Russia's presidential spokesperson tips his head a bit here saying this treaty was designed to keep weapons under control, which should raise many eyebrows. However, President Trump's administration has fought tooth and nail for an American first agenda. This move signals to his base, but to the world rather, that America will not be hindered by outside military interference. For the people that were following along, the Trump administration stated six months ago the plans of withdrawing from this accord. Pay attention to the second paragraph I have up on the screen. The media excludes the fact that Russia flew its stealth bombers and other so-called reconnaissance planes near Alaska's shores during the Obama administration, claiming they violated no international law. With the U.S. out of this accord, that can never happen again and be deemed innocent. High-ranking Democrats and liberal mouthpieces have began freaking out over this decision, urging Biden to rejoin immediately once he is sworn into the presidency. China's foreign ministry also wastes no time in laying shame to President Trump saying the move undermines the military-to-military -military trust. These are bold words, with all due respect to a nation of uh, China, that has lost the trust of its own people in many cases. Look how they treated the protesters of Hong Kong for a most recent example. The Beijing AP goes on to say that not only has America undermined trust, but also transparency. China top officials show how inconsistent their messaging is. Not only are they not a signatory of the accord, but they accuse America of failing at arms control. With that line of thinking, who has arms control over China? Reports are emerging of Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu 
making a secret visit to Saudi's crown prince. News out of Jerusalem suggests that Israel sees Saudi Arabia as a key to a moderate nation that will help protect them from Iranian aggression. This move comes as Prime Minister Netanyahu is unsure of how much a Biden administration will support Israel's sovereignty, which many critics say will be limited, if at all. Thanks for watching today's video. I will be back with more, and until next time, I'm turning it over to you. Good night, everyone.